All right, so here we've just created a custom shape wall. It's got an opening in it. And that's not really so different than what we've seen before when we've used this tool. So if you remember, when we had to fill in some spots in our stairwell, and when we had to create some custom shapes for our parking lot, remember we did the handicap symbol uh, and the stall lines, we used this tool here, Model in Place. So what we've done at this point is not really too new. We've seen that we have some options for customization using the Model in Place tool. Uh, what's a little unique about what we've just done here with this wall is that it still carries with it all of the tools and options that are normally available with walls. So the advantage of just keeping this in that same category is we can do sweeps and reveals and we'll look at those a little bit later. Um, one of the other things that we can do is we can add a curtain wall to this like what we've seen before when we use the storefront curtain wall object to add windows. So to mimic that I want you to just go to the level one floor plan view. And like we've done before, we're going to activate the wall tool and choose the storefront curtain wall type. So down towards the bottom, make sure you've got the storefront type. This won't work if you're using the regular curtain wall or exterior glazing types. And because we're going to edit the profile for this curtain wall storefront object, it doesn't really matter how large we make it. It is important that you place that storefront curtain wall object entirely within the wall. So you'll see that it cuts away, any overlapping geometry is forced back away from the host wall. And if we go to a 3D view, we'll be able to see that this storefront curtain wall object now sits entirely within the custom wall that we created. The same tool that allows us create, to create this custom shape for this wall is going to be available for this wall object. So if I go to my self elevation view again, you'll see that now that I've selected my curtain wall storefront object, once again, I have an edit profile button for it. So if I activate that, it'll put me in sketch mode and I can see the pink sketch lines that are determining the shape of that storefront curtain wall object. And like I did with the custom wall, I can just grab those pink sketch lines, hit delete and create whatever shape I want. So now I'm back to the draw panel. I can use the regular line tool or I can use pick lines. And if I'm using pick lines, I want to specify an offset so that I don't get complete overlap. And then I just go to work editing lines here to create a custom shape for this uh, window. So now, once I've finished and I've got a closed sketch, if I click on the green check mark, you'll see that it gives me a finished curtain wall. Now I might get warnings like this letting me, uh, or letting me know that there might be elements that need to be deleted. I might have some unresolved grid lines or mullions that uh, are now unnecessary. So I can click delete element to get rid of those. It's not going to prevent me from creating this object. It just lets me know that there's some changes that can't be neglected. And now I've got a custom shape window. And I can keep editing that. All that information is available and I can keep making further edits to it. It's all parametric. And in this case, I could even make a window that would fill in the opening that I left in this original uh, wall shape. So I could go back to level one, activate the wall tool, create another storefront curtain wall object with the intention of not leaving it rectangular as it is now. Just going back to, let's say, my self elevation view editing the profile. I could scratch or uh, get rid of that sketch entirely and just rely entirely on pick lines to create a round window inside this opening. And if I didn't want to have the mullions crossing through there, uh, I can edit those grid lines and delete them just like I would with a normal curtain wall object. 